So today we're going to uh, up to Whitebird Grade. It's in between Grangeville and Whitebird. It's this large sloped area that cuts across all the Columbia River basalts. And in those basalts, there are cherts that we're trying to find that we can match up with the cherts here in the site. We're, we have a few more spots to hit up there. Uh, there's some really beautiful cherts that we found. There's some greens, there's some reds, there's orange. Uh, some of these we found in the site and some we have not. But the point of what we're trying to do is to try and figure out where in this canyon we can find those particular basalts and those particular cherts that are in the basalts. By doing that, we can try and find the sources of the toolstone that we have here in the site. where we left off yesterday. We found most of the 13 shirts that we found yesterday here. Let's just let's go to the ones that you were really concerned about. Let's try and get this done. So these sulfury kind of yellowish orange deposits here are kind of an indicator that there's shirts there, perhaps. We have our custom made Extremely long rock hammer that Lauren built for us. So this part's a little bit shady, so watch out. It's pretty beautiful stuff. So we need at least 25 pieces, like we said, of each nodule that we find like this to get a statistically significant sample. You should try one more bash. <laughs> now we gotta get the rock that surrounds the chert itself and hopefully the stuff above it. The idea is that we can match the chert the geochemistry of the chert to the basalt that surrounds it. And hopefully, by inputting all this data into GIS, we can uh, start to build a predictive model for the lands landscape in the Salmon River Canyon itself to see where this stuff would be exposed naturally, where early humans here in the area could have found it and used it for a tool stone. There seems to be patterning to where we find the cherts. It has this vesicular uh, basalt host rock. The vesicular meaning it has these holes in there. Uh, those are gas bubbles from when the, the rock itself cooled. Most of the cherts we find seem to be surrounded by this particular type of basalt. We don't know exactly what Columbia River basalt this is, but we're working to figure that out right now. And that's why we're sampling this stuff too. Just like with the cherts, we can use our PXRF on this. So I, to match the geochemistry of this rock to what's already been sampled by earlier geologists. So this chert here is really unique in its color, obviously. It's very rich in green. It's not glassy at all. It's really sugary composition and the way that it's forming within this seam of this fault right here. Uh, it's definitely haven't come across this yet. And uh, the host rock that it's coming, being formed within is unique as well. And we took a large sample of that just previously to this, so. Right here, we got another chert source coming out. You can actually follow it in the vein right here, going up and over and back down. And it's actually underneath here as well. It's a really good sample of chert.
uh, just found the uh, peanut brittle source that Alex found last year. You see there's no translucent color to, at all to it. So we just sampled the basalt from this. We also got some of the trick because it's really nice. Uh, we have all these other uh, samples here. We're getting ready to take them back to camp. And the next step is to start to look at the basalts themselves, match them up with descriptions that have been done previously by geologists that have worked in this canyon. And then uh, we'll start to do PXRF analysis on them so we can actually match them geochemically with the work that's been done previously.